road has got to be improved. Um, yeah, and, and I'm, I think we're hearing that message uh, that the residents would like uh, Heron Road improving. Uh, I, yeah, can I just, just, I know people have this view that councils are kind of omnipotent and can do pretty well what they like and ride brush shot over people. My experience is that they can't. So uh, we say a compulsory purchase order. The council needs it, so the council should be able to go and get it because it won't pay the market price for it or the price that the person who owns the land wants to sell it for. I have to tell you, I have seen compulsory purchase actions taking years in terms of, if they're contested, they can take years because uh, actually one of the great things about British law or English law or whatever law it is, uh, it, it is uh, set to protect the, the individual against the overweening authority. That's one of the things I like about uh, our system, that just because the council has all the resources that it could possibly wish for, it cannot just uh, decide it wants to do something and ride roughshod over an individual's right to my own a piece of land. So just to be fair on that, it's not as straightforward as the council saying, we want to build a roundabout, we want that piece of land, we'll get a, um, a compulsory purchase order and we'll, uh, we'll have it in six months time or oh, genuinely it can be incredibly less than 10 years would have been good uh, well sometimes they're refu refused altogether i have to tell you so uh, if, it, if a sufficient case um, is made then they can be refused altogether but i'm conscious that we've been at it an hour i did see somebody indicating uh, so we'll have um have one more question i think and then we will uh, we will move on so sir just a quickie, please, ladies and gentlemen. Well, my name's John Cranny. I live in Sunningdale by Fingal. I don't know if any of you councillors can tell us if this year the council hopes or intends to actually clear all the weeds. Because we now have them in Sunningdale Drive on the edges that high. We've got grass which is established in the tarmac, which is weed proof it won't weeds won't get rid of it you'll have to buy a flamethrower soon and that will unfortunately melt the tarmac where it hasn't already cracked so i just think as councillors you all shout we haven't got the money we've not got the money it's not our fault it's westminster but you find the money for the golf resorts you'll find this no matter you've got you're already paying the consultants but Let's have a little thought about the community and what a bloody mess it looks. And it's all round. Councillor Sullivan was here before. Someone tackled him and he actually got the grass cut. The grass on the verge is on Pensby Road, which is high. He actually got it cut. I'm not, I was going to congratulate him, but he's disappeared. So I just think it's, as councillors, let's go back to your bread and butter issues like the environment. You've got it mentioned in the minutes. Well, Let's think a bit harder in future. Yeah, Thank you, uh, everybody. Can I, can I just point out as well, um, because there has been, um, you know, since certainly since the um, since the referendum all that, but this tendency to say you lot or you know that group over there, you know, in this case it's that lot, you you councillors or you lot or whatever. Uh, I can assure you, I don't consider myself part of a lot, uh, but I do believe that everybody, every council around this table will be doing everything they possibly can for their, for their own wards and their constituents. In my personal experience of the vast, vast, vast majority of officers is that they're doing exactly the same thing too. Um, I'd love to say it's always all of them, but I have known on occasion, uh, I've had my difficulties with one or two, but it is one or two out of a team of, what is it, four and a half thousand, five thousand people, which isn't bad. Um, so, please, we, you know, we are, we live in our communities, we're just the same as everybody else. We uh, see these things just the same as everybody else, and we try and get something done about them just the same as everybody else. And, and can I just point out as well, okay, um, about assumptions and generalisations. Um, please don't assume that I would go around and 
would say, or even my colleagues would say, oh, this, you know, money's tight, it's all West Wilson's fault, therefore we're not going to cut the weeds or treat the weeds. I assure you, nothing could be further from my mind. Okay? Uh, so, again, there's something about what's gone on about people making assumptions and, and generalisations, and sometimes it's worth just checking out. Coming to the point, though, uh, we are very fortunate indeed to have the chair, as I understand it, of the Environment Scrutiny Committee sitting with us, uh, whose job it is to hold the uh, hold his own party's cabinet to account for uh, the delivery of services and decisions they make. Um, if you're like me, not just the weeds, but the infrequent grass cutting uh, uh, is also an issue that is often raised with me. And maybe, Phil, if you could share your thoughts about uh, how you're going to improve the situation, that would be, I'm sure, would be very welcome to us all, really. Happy to. The Environment Subcommittee, Subcommittee Committee is yet to meet, actually. But if you want to chat to me after this and tell Sorry, me the well the environment, the environment Scrutiny it, Committee yeah. is yet to meet. The Environment... Can I make a suggestion? You know where it says all? <laughs> so the Environment Scrutiny Committee is yet to meet. But if you want to come chat to me at the end, I'll take a list of your concerns. I'll make sure that they're raised at some venture. Okay. But in the, in, in the, in the instance, if you want to tell me exactly where in some bell drive, well, you just have to walk just like the front wall, you'll see it. You don't need me to explain. It's all the thing wall. It's, it's pretty well, most well, along with the litter. And, the, and when they come and cut the grass and plow, plow it up with their little little uh, machines, you know. It's pretty, pretty obvious. It's like, uh, do you go past the thing wall corner? Here's another yes. thing in the environment. Have you noticed since they put the traffic lights there, how much for the, the Warren surgery, the road floods? been flooding now for three or four years. Now all the councillors must go past. Does anyone ever think of saying, why is it flooding? Does it has it got a problem? There's grids there, but it floods. It, it all in it, you know, I'm fed up. Getting old of you know your help people and reporting things and knowing that the council people walking past or driving past and seeing the same thing happens all the time. I just guess, you know, I I, I'm sorry your chairman protests too much. He likes to protest. It's I'm, his I'm way. Good. I know him of old. Yeah, and, but the thing it. is, it's you sad to it. see councillors are like um, council employees. I think they go around with their eyes shut. As I say, you walk down my road, you walk down most of the roads on Thingwall and Pensby, and you'll see the same thing. As people here said, but you're not all good guys in the council. You go with your eyes shut. That's why you're in the council often, you think. Well, it sounds like my request for uh, a new quote where it's going to turn up the politics fell on stony ground. But I think the issue, I think, I think the issue is, um, you know, clearly you are angry about the point. Angry, well, fed up, whatever. Disillusioned. Disillusioned. Yeah. So if you would like to share your disillusionment with Phil, the end, and that's the offer that Phil's made. If we can list those down, um, you know, then, then Phil has promised, has, in his role as chairman of the uh, Environment Scrutiny Committee, to make sure these matters are looked at. I'm not uh, saying they no, can be I fixed. Mean, as, as my, in my role as a ward councillor, I'm happy to do that. With regards to the Environment Scrutiny Committee, I'll chat to you afterwards about that if you, yeah. if you want. If there's something I can bring, or if it is just about getting the, something cut, I can do that. But I've got to say, to say that council officers and councils walk around their eyes shut and to imply that they're no, actually they lazy, that is quite unfair. No, no that, that is unfair. unfair. You look at this border. This border is littered from end to end. And there's fellas running round in the car parks in the middle of Birkenhead getting at people for dropping a fag end. And yet you go down the road and the people think, you go, to the, you go around the corner, there's Chatting Cross there, and look at the filth in... The people are throwing cans into that pub that's disused. It's like that. You know, and then they're talking about, you know, I think you've got your priorities wrong as council. You, don't, you do go around with your eyes shut. If you, if you weren't paid for the job, I think you'd do a lot better job if you didn't get money for it. Too many crops. Years ago, they didn't get much, and they did better. And, so and, 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 and as I say, I like a good bit of robustness at these meetings. Keeps us all uh, keeps us all young and on our toes. What I'm going to do, uh, 
it is a good last question. Yeah, Cheers, wasn't it? I'm going to ask David, who's indicating he'd yeah, like to uh, say uh, something. Uh, you, Eddie, do you want to say something too? So, David, Eddie, and then uh, the assistant chief constable. <laughs> I did have my eyes closed, I do apologise. Just in answer to your specific question, I think I'd like to note that within the last two weeks I've had five or six specific requests for this problem of weed overgrowth, both in West Kirby and Thurston and in Hoylake and Mells. And as recently as today, I've had a, a note from a senior officer, which I'll just read to you very quickly. It just says, I forwarded your inquiry regarding substantial weed overgrowth to street scene for logging into the CRM system and to colleagues in grounds maintenance who will definitely be able to provide you with a response. Well, that's as recently as 3 o'clock this afternoon. I'm hoping I get the constructive response. And if Phil can make a note of that as well. It is a problem all over the borough, as this gentleman has said, and I do not wander around with my eyes shut. I certainly want around looking for flooding, in particular my background is construction. I'm looking for all the flooding problems we've had, and for weed overgrowth, and for areas where there's a lot of potholes. So please, please don't include me in your suggestion that we walk around with our eyes shut. And by own personal knowledge, all the people on the council that I know from whatever party they belong to do wander around and look always where they're going. They certainly do not wander around with their eyes shut. So I'm hopeful that within the next few days I will get a response to this specific query, which I will report back to the people who made a specific complaint, which you're quite right, there is something that needs to be done about it. What has been done, they've sent these wagons down the road, still, as you probably know, with the uh, brushes on the side, which do not even touch the weeds, but they won't get the long weeds out of the gutters. As close to me as in Roman Road, where I live in Mells, the weeds are so high that I think there's probably wild animals uh, hiding in them at the present time. Well, that's only because you've got your eyes shut. Is that why you don't keep your eyes shut? That's the point. Anyway, no. something is being done, and I don't want to think nothing was being Good. done. Good. Thank you. And I will continue to pursue it. Eddie. Just, just two points, if I may. First and foremost, I wonder if all of us, you can hear what's going on. Because at times, because the speakers are not working properly, and this has happened on numerous occasions at different halls we've been in. I just find it difficult at times, if someone's talking at the very far end of the room, I just can't catch them. Well, I go back to the gentleman here in front of me and, uh, and what David was saying is you're quite correct in many ways. One of the biggest problems that council have is they do not believe in pre maintenance. Preventive maintenance is one of the main things. They, they, as far as I'm aware of, I haven't seen a gully sucker anywhere. Now, if you, if you look around, where, especially where I live, West Kirby, Hoylake, Mells area, if the sand gets in the grids, for instance, it cakes. Why, when they're brushing, or even when they're cutting the grass, and lo and behold, the chaff blow comes along and blows it into the road, and sure enough, you've got the so-called brush truck that comes around, why can't he stop at the grids and suck out? Because what's actually happening there is these gr grids are getting caked, they're, they're coming like cement because it sands in it, and there's your flooding. Why can't we have preventive maintenance in Pacific areas because they're terrified to spend a pound today where tomorrow it's going to cost them a pounds to do it. Uh, good point. I um, think you're going to have to step up to keep the, keep the cabinet to a cast there, Phil, I think. Um, that's all right with you. I'm glad he's non-political. It was all personal. <laughs> um, right, David, you wanted to say a few words about the weed I wanted to say that I'm really sorry that you're having the situation that you described. Um, I was asked to look after this area last year. We did have problems last year. We take on a temporary seasonal staff. Life being life, we have to train them both in using the, the liquids that they use. And we also have to train some of them in using the quad bikes that we use to do the spraying. Clearly that training gives them opportunities then to move elsewhere. We did have a real problem last year with the temporary treatment of staff. The other thing is that we can only do this in certain weather conditions, both on the day when we do the spraying and also for the time afterwards. So we did have a problem last year. I have been repeatedly assured this year, because I have asked the question, is it a resource issue? And I'm told by the manager of this service that he has the resources he needs, he has the people, he has the materials. So I'm really sorry that you describe what you describe, and I'll take it back and try and do something about it. In terms of the litter, um, I think I would take a different view. We spend over 60, around £16 million pounds a year in, in disposal in the borough, which includes taking tons and tons of litter off the streets. We do have <coughs> focus areas in the town centres. We do do some big cleaning and litter picking where we're in the high volume areas. So 
So again, it, it isn't for lack of trying, it's just that it's a never-ending battle, really. Thank you very much for that reply. Um, it's interesting, though, isn't it? This year, if you haven't sprayed, stand by us. I know, because we go out and spray our corner. <laughs> you know, because otherwise, if we leave it, it gets worse and worse. So, the, you know, we go and spray around, we go to a week or... Well, what I'll do is I'll take the comments back, because, because of what happened last year, I asked the question early on, did the manager have the resource he needed? People, liquids, bikes, trained people told me yes, so he should be able to find his way but around. He's left it too yeah, the only thing that the only thing I know what he'll say, one of the one of the things he will say that's handicapped him is that it goes back to the weather thing as well, which sounds a lame excuse, but they can only do this in certain in certain weather conditions. The problem this year is a different one. The one the challenge I've got at the moment is that the temp we, ha we haven't been able to recruit sufficient temporary staff and keep them to do the grass cutting in the cemeteries and that that's become an issue as well. So it's about trying to balance a seasonal workforce against the needs. But I will take the comments away and I will try and sort it out. Okay. Can I thank everyone for the constructive and informative, if you don't mind me saying so, uh, uh, answers and the uh, intriguing and sometimes provoking questions. But it sparked a bit of a debate, which is always really good. And everyone learns that Phil is the chairman of the Environmental Security Committee. Uh, um, so thank you for that. It was a, it was a good run round. It was more than the hour on the agenda. Just a bit of a, a notice, really, quite an important one, I think, um, which is the, uh, and it's an uh, item of AFA book. Uh, we're all to honour those who fell at the Battle of the Somme. So we're all is to mark the centenary of the Battle of the Somme with a poignant early morning vigil at the War Memorial, Grange Hill, West Kirby. So again, people are invited to join the mayor. The mayor of Wirral will be there. I understand it's at 7.30 uh, tomorrow morning at Grange Hill. Uh, Grange, go on, sorry. Well, I just pointed out, Chair, I think it's a grave mistake. The actual silence will be being held at 7.30. The people really need 